Hi, everyone. It's great to be speaking here at Apache Con Asia this year. Today, I'm going to be talking about filtering and drill down functionality in Superset and what work the community is doing in this area currently. First, a few words about Superset. So Apache Superset is one of the most popular open source business intelligence tools. It's the second highest rated Apache project measured in GitHub stars right after eCharts at 47,000 stars. That's up some 20% since last year this time. Superset is a fully featured data exploration tool featuring charting, dashboarding, and a SQL IDE for quick data exploration. In addition, many advanced features like Jinjin templating, alerts and reports, and custom chart plugin support are available. Superset development has been very active lately. Just a few weeks ago, Superset 2.0 was released, which is a huge step forward in terms of user experience and stability. Preset is organizing a meetup on Superset 2.0 next week. So to hear more about the new release, please check out the link in the slide below. Like most BI tools, Superset offers a lot of different ways of filtering, exploring, and drilling down into your data. Something that causes a lot of confusion is the different terminology used for filtering and drill down. Often when people talk about drill down, they mean different things. So let's start by first going through what filtering options are currently available in Superset and how they work. The most basic data exploration tool in Superset is the regular chart filter. Filters are basically where clauses that get added to your query. Superset supports all regular SQL operators like equals, less than, greater than, and so forth. Some dialect specific operators are also supported like regular expressions. You can also directly write where clauses if you wanna do more advanced SQL. Here's an example. So for this demo, I'm gonna be exploring the birth names example data set. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a line chart to show how popular different names are uh, during different time periods. So for that, I'm going to choose the time series line chart here. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to be using the sum num metric. Uh, and this is how many birth observations there are. And then I'm going to drag in the name as the dimension. And when I do click create chart, it uh, shows essentially all, all the names that, um, that have been given to children. So to limit this, I'm just going to select the top 10 names. I'm going to do that. Uh, then it just shows uh, 10 names here. Uh, and now if I just want to see boys' names, I can now drag in gender as the filter. Then I cho just choose equal to and boy and save. And now that I click update chart, I only see boys' names. And to validate, just to verify here, uh, what I've done is, this is the query that Superset generates. Uh, and here we can see that there's a where clause for uh, gender equals boy. The filter box was the first iteration of adding interactive filtering to Superset. This feature was added in 2016 and is implemented as a chart type that's placed on the dashboard. The filter box makes it possible to add filters on any column in a data set and also some time filters. Here's a demo of how filter box works. Here I'm going to make a filter box based on the birth names example data set again. So I click on birth names. Then I get into the explore view. Then I change the chart type. I just type filter here and select filter box and select. Uh, and here you can then open up the filter configuration. And here you can choose whether or not you want to have date filters. I'll leave that on for now. Uh, then it's also possible to do instant filtering. So this makes it possible to apply the filters as soon as they change. Uh, and also, uh, it's possible to add time grains and time columns as uh, more advanced uh, filters. But uh, similar to in the previous example, uh, I'll add a filter for the gender. 
So I'll just type gender here like that. And now that I create the filter or update the filter, then uh, I get a drop down for the gender type. And now I'll save this filter box to uh, an example dashboard uh, where I've placed the chart that we just created. I'll just call this the gender filter. And now that I go to the dashboard, uh, I can see that uh, here we have the top 10 names uh, that include uh, boy and girl names. And if I choose here, girl, now I'm only going to see girl names. And then I can also specify a time range here. So as we can see, the data uh, goes back to 1965 and up, up till uh, 2007. So I'll just add an advanced time range here and I'll say last 20 years. So now this will just uh, show data uh, starting from 2002. So now if I apply, now I can see that the earliest, the earliest time point is 2003. And the filter indicator will show that I'm applying gender, girl, and time range uh, last 20 years. Dashboard native filters are similar to filter boxes, but they can be placed directly on the dashboard. Native filters are a much more convenient way of filtering dashboards uh, and uses the same UI components that Superset is generally using, which are based on the end design UI library. This feature has been available behind a feature flag since Superset 1.0, that was made generally available in Superset 1.4. There are several different types of filters available, so let's look at how they work. So here we are back in our example dashboard. I've removed the filter box to demonstrate how native filters work, but you can also mix filter boxes with native filters, but it's uh, generally not recommended. So to see that native filters, uh, we click on this to expand the filter bar. Uh, and this exposes um, uh, a component where you can see all your native filters in one place. So I click on add edit filters. And here we can add or edit uh, native filters. So the first thing to do is um, you choose filter type. Uh, and here, uh, we're going to create a value filter for a gender similar to what we did with the filter box. Then we select gender as the column. And when I save that, now we have a drop down here uh, and I can now then define my filter and see that this filters uh, similarly to how the filter box was filtering. But then we can also add other filter types. Uh, so I'll, I'll add a time range. And then I'll also add a numerical filter. So numerical range. So now we're gonna be able to filter based on the amount of births that have been observed in a year. So here I define last 20 years like I did in the previous example. And then I can define a filter here that says only show observations where there have been less than 25.7 thousand uh, births in a year. And when I apply that, we can see on the filter indicator that we're applying gender girl, time ranges last 20 years, and then births should be less than 21.7 thousand. It's also possible to restrict uh, native filters from only applying to certain charts uh, on a dashboard. So I'll just show how this that works. So the I'm I'm now going to add um, multiple tabs to a dashboard. So I'm adding a top level tab. This would be the main tab.
I'm going to call this the other tab. And here we can see that um, the top 10 names chart is placed on the main tab. And on the other tab, I'm going to place a pie chart that I just created. And I'll save this here. Uh, and I can now edit the gender filter to only apply to the main tab. And what this means is that now that I'm, when I'm exploring the main tab, I'll see the gender filter. And I can also see when I'm hovering over the, the gender filter that it's, it's highlighting, uh, it's highlighting the top 10 names chart uh, that this is applying to. But then when I go over to the other tab, tab I'm going to see that uh, the gender filter is removed from view and it's being showed as a filter out of scope because this filter isn't applying uh, to the state's pie chart that I just added. However, hovering on the other charts uh, or on the other filters, I can see that they're now highlighting that this uh, filter will also apply uh, to the to the state's pie chart. So this means that if you have a really big dashboard uh, with lots of different filters and filters applying to uh, different charts, it's always going to hide the filters that aren't applicable uh, to your current selection. Cross filters work much like native filters or filter boxes by adding filtering functionality to charts themselves. Depending on the dashboard, cross filters can provide a more intuitive user experience by making it possible to directly filter from charts instead of separate filter components. Cross filtering is supported on most eCharts based chart types, but also a few of the other key charts like the table chart and the pivot table chart. Let's see how they work. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm going to add cross filtering to the state pie chart that I just created. So in order to be able to enable cross filtering on charts, uh, you need to enable the dashboard cross filters feature flag. Um, you should you can check the documentation on on how to enable feature flags and the reason for this is that uh, cross filtering uh, functionality is still evolving so it hasn't been made generally available yet so once you've enabled the feature flag um, and you you go into um, any of the e charts based um, chart types um, you're going to see under the filter section uh, a checkbox that says enable dashboard cross filters so I'm going to check that, and then I'm going to save. And now that I go to the demo dashboard, I can now click on a slice on the pie chart. Uh, and now it's going to show that it's emitting the other states uh, as a filter. And here I can now see that I'm applying a cross filter. And that means that I can al also mix with native filters. So now I can see that I'm applying a cross filter for other uh, states. And then I'm also applying the, the girl gender uh, native filter. To add some details about the underlying data to the dashboard, we can do a few additional tricks. So here I'm creating a table chart uh, and I'm going to select raw records. And then I'm just going to uh, choose all the columns that I'm interested in uh, seeing on the on the dashboard. So I'll just drag in uh, all the columns that I have in, in the data set, leaving out the irrelevant ones. And then I create the chart. And I'm just going to save it here. I'm going to call it raw records, and then I'm going to add it to the demo dashboard. And I'll just resize this to be slightly bigger and save. And so now when I change any of the filters on the dashboard, I can immediately see that the raw records also update. Uh, and this, uh, 
this is kind of a quick way of adding drill down to your uh, dashboard. So here you can see uh, both aggregated data about your data set and then also record level details about it. So next, we're going to look at some more recent developments on drill down. This year, a few organizations have been working on adding more advanced drill down functionality to the product. While the current feature set already satisfies the majority of drilling needs, data exploration and especially ad hoc analysis could benefit from some additional features. The first feature which is being worked on uh, is called drill to details or also drill through. This feature makes it possible to view the underlying data without having to add any additional charts to the dashboard. For instance, you might have a chart that shows in invoices aggregated per month and want to view all individual invoices in that single month. For this, you would simply need to click on the month, select drill to details and be shown all the invoices for that month. In this design, the user right clicks on the phase one slice in the example COVID data set, after which a pop-up opens up showing all the records that satisfy the selected dimension. This makes it possible to do much cleaner dashboards without the need for separate raw table charts with underlying data. The next features are called drill across and drill down or drill up. Drill down is essentially a subset of drill across, so let's look at that first. Drill across makes it possible to drill into an aggregated slice of data, changing the filters and group by columns in the chart. In practice, this temporarily changes the chart metadata by adding a new filter to the chart based on the selection and then changing the group by to correspond with the dimension that the person wants to drill into. For the example birth names dataset, one might be interested in seeing the distribution of births per state in the girl slice, despite there not being any hierarchy associated between gender and state. Drill down, on the other hand, requires defining hierarchy semantics in the underlying data. Typical hierarchical dimensions are geographical areas that go from continent to country to state to city, or temporal dimensions going from year to quarter to month, and so on. An early prototype, which is a draft PR on the superset repo, shows how a hierarchy could be added to a pie chart. This POC was made by Yong Zie and shows one way of implementing drill down on charts. This is done by making the group by field accept multiple dimensions and assuming that each dimension is a drill down into the previous one. Let's look at the videos in the PR. So here the hierarchy has been defined as going from country to state to city. At first, the pie is made with all the dimensions, but after checking enable drill down, only a single dimension is shown at the time. And clicking on a single slice adds the previous slice as a filter and replaces the group by, by the next one in the hierarchy. So here we can see that go, we can go from United States into state into city and the same for France. And in the next video, the chart has been placed on a dashboard. Here we can see that clicking on the dimensions will also affect the other charts on the, on the dashboard. So here the user clicks on United States and adds a filter uh, for that country in the other charts on the dashboard. The previous POC started the discussion on making drill down and drill through more generic with the intention of making it available to all charts in Superset, not just adding it on a chart by chart basis. In this new design proposal, the user is able to click on the quarter slice and there will be presented with a context menu, allowing the user to either view the data as a table or drill down into the slice. Similar to the POC, the user drills into a quarter and is presented with monthly aggregates.
Finally, one feature that's being planned is called Drill to Dashboard. This feature would make it possible to select the dimension on a chart and then open up a new dashboard with the selected dimensions populated in the native filters. However, this feature requires adding additional semantics for mapping chart dimensions to native filters, and as such hasn't yet been worked on actively. Since a few years ago, Superset has supported adding custom visualization plugins. For instance, if an organization has very specific visualization needs that can't be satisfied with the charts that Superset ships with, it's possible to develop new plugins and add them to your Superset fork. Also, to avoid the need for using a fork and make it possible to use the official releases, a feature called Dynamic Plugins has been developed that makes it possible to load Viz plugins that are hosted on a CDN. However, note that this feature is still experimental. To be able to develop your own Viz plugins, you need to use the NPM packages hosted on the Superset UI NPM organization, or simply use the source code from the official Superset releases. The following preset blog features detailed step-by-step -step instructions for creating a Viz plugin. Here first, the example is using the Superset Yeoman generator to create a Hello World chart and then extends that and makes some customizations to be able to produce something that actually produces a real chart. So if you're interested in visualization plugin development, I recommend you check out this blog. To be able to add cross-filtering support to your plugin, you need to le leverage the set data mask hook. This hook makes it possible to both add filters to other charts, but also re-trigger the chart's own query, which is useful for adding pagination or drill down like functionality to your chart. By looking at the eCharts Viz plugin collection, you can see how cross-filtering has been implemented. So here we can see the eCharts pie chart. And like other Viz plugins, this plugin receives a lot of props uh, that you can use for rendering your chart. Here we have the selected group by columns, we have the selected values that you've clicked, uh, and then we have the set data mask hook. Um, and first of all, we've here we've uh, created a, a change handler, which picks out all the values that you've uh, selected, and then it calls the set data mask hook that's rendered based on uh, whatever your selection was. So there's a prop here called extra form data, uh, which contains filters. And, and these are uh, just additional filters that we're going to be applying to other charts. And then we add the filter state prop. And here you can add any kind of state that your plugin requires uh, to be able to function properly. And then we just add uh, this change handler to, to an event handler's object. And then we pass that to our eChart wrapper component um, in the event handler's prop. And this makes it possible to render the, the pie chart with cross-filtering functionality. And since Superset UI is written completely in TypeScript, all the types and interfaces are available. So if you need to uh, see what kind of values the set data mask hook supports, you can just go in and uh, look at them. So for instance, here we see extra form data, filter state, and own state. And if, if I want to know what extra form data looks like, you can just look at, uh, look at that the, the type definition. The Viz plugin framework can also be used to develop new native filters. To look at some examples of how the current native filters have been developed, take a look at the source slash filters directory in the superset frontend directory of the main repo. For example, the numerical range filter can be seen here. First, you just need to add the native filter behavior, which is defined here, to the plugin metadata. And after that, the plugin follows a similar pattern like the other Viz plugins. So here, very much similar to the eCharts pie chart, we receive the set data mask hook from the chart props. And then later on here in the code, uh, we uh, have a change handler, which then uh, takes in the selected values and then calls the set data mask hook. So very similar development pattern to the other visualization plugins. The intention is to fully support drill down for plugins as well going forward. While the majority of drill down can be performed using the set data mask hook, higher level abstractions are planned to be added to Superset UI 
to make it easy for developers to add these new behaviors to their plugins. The plan is to add at least two new hooks to Superset UI to complement the set data mask hook. The first planned hook is a hook that exposes all the supported drilling actions, making it possible to attach the drilling actions to any customer event handler. The second is a hook for the context menu, which makes it possible to add custom drilling actions to the context menu that gets triggered when interacting with the chart. Examples of custom drilling actions could be opening up new popover windows. With these hooks, developers should be able to easily add drill down to their plugins. And later, if they have very custom needs, they can refine the behavior as required. Implementing drill down in Superset has been challenging, as it's important to establish a framework that's as future-proof as possible without affecting existing functionality. One thing that has been important is making sure that drill down doesn't negatively affect performance. Superset is built specifically for running on huge amounts of data. And this means that queries should be as compact as possible and only retrieve the minimum amount of data at any one time. eCharts already provide some really nice charts that provide drill down functionality built in. For instance, the tree map chart supports drilling down which interactively makes it possible to go deeper and deeper into your data. This provides a seamless user experience as the chart can be rendered at runtime in the browser. However, to be able to provide the data for this type of interacting charting experience, Superset would need to request the necessary data upfront. While this would be great from an end user perspective, the query would potentially require fetching massive amounts of data at very fine granularity. This might cause unnecessary load on the database and might even cause browser performance issues if the dimensions are of very high cardinality. Therefore, all drilling actions in Superset need to fetch only the minimum amount of data at each interaction and only request more granular data when needed. In addition, finding a uniform user experience can sometimes be challenging, as users usually expect different types of charts to behave differently when interacting with them. For example, when selecting a line on a line chart, users will generally expect the series to be selected. Like this. However, on bar charts, and especially stacked bar charts, it's less clear what the user wants to choose. On one hand, the user might want to also choose the series, which happens here. But more often than not, users expect the bar to be chosen, in this case, the year, and not the series. Therefore, End user research is critical in making sure that this feature works as users expect it to work. Some other user experience related issues include multiple selection and hierarchical selection. For instance, the pivot table chart also supports cross filtering, and clicking on a dimension emits a cross filter. However, it's unclear what the user expects to happen when clicking on a subdimension in this case, the state Florida, should the emitted filter include the parent filter, in this case, the gender, or only the subdimension, in this case, Florida. Currently, Superset assumes the latter, but this may not be what some users expect. While it's not commonly known, Superset actually has great embedded functionality, making it possible to embed Superset charts and dashboards in external web applications. However, adding, adding drill down to embedded charts adds an additional layer of complexity. And currently, there is no simple way of adding drilling functionality to embedded charts. So this is also something that needs to be tackled at some point. So this was an introduction into how drill down currently works in Superset and what's currently being worked on by the community. If drill down is something you're interested in working on or have any questions on, please join the community either via the Superset mailing list on GitHub or in Slack, specifically the Drill Actions channel. We look forward to hearing from you.